now. Hi, and welcome everyone to our projector gathering number 25. And today my guest is Marloest. Can, can you help me to pronounce your name right? <laughs> first of all, I'm sure you, you have to do this sometimes. Can you help me out? It is short for Marie Louise. It's Marlous. Marlous. Well, you can say Marie or Luce or whatever. I like Marlous. Okay. Yeah. And now I get it. It's kind of all condensed into one. Yes. And, and you're, uh, you're in the Netherlands today, is that right? Uh, I live in Belgium, but now I, currently I'm, I'm in the Netherlands because I just told Raluca my dad fell through a roof last night, six meters down on a concrete floor. So he's now in surgery. <laughs> oh my goodness. But it will be okay. I mean, he, he got off really, 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 uh, well, light, so to speak. It, uh, it will be okay. Maybe he's got some third lines in there. That's the kind of thing that I would do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't have my, my father's chart here, but we did, uh, we did look, look it up. We did look yeah. it up. Yeah, cool. Okay. Well, um, I'm, I'm pretty excited because, well, I, I'm more delighted than excited, but I'm very much looking forward to talking to you because you're, you're quite rare being um, an ego projected projector. And, uh, you know, I, I tend to jump on ego projector projectors whenever I meet them. And I'm like, hey, can we talk to you and talk about your chart? Um, and, uh, you know, for, for anyone that, that doesn't know, maybe we can pull up your chart and have a, have a quick initial look at it. Um, how, how, um, what should we ask you to start with? Is there anything, first of all, just sort of before we go into the details, is there anything sort of about this that you want to share with us to, to start us off with? Oh, uh, in particular, um, no, no, break, no. Shall I break? Otherwise, I will start talking and I will not stop. So no, no, I'll, <laughs> I'll just, I'll just look. At, first, hear the questions. We're here to listen to you, but let me, let me break it down. I mean, you obviously know what is it on your chart that makes you an ego projected projector, but I want to break it down for anyone that isn't familiar with this. So, you obviously a projector because you have no sacral defined. And you also have no motor connected to the throat. So basically, um, as you know, us projectors are everything that's left over. Um, and, and I think of all the different types, there are so many different kinds of projectors. I mean, I know the reflectors say they're all different from each other. And, and of course they are. But um, as far as which centers are defined. So you have the G center defined. And you have the, the ego, the will, the heart center defined as well connected by that 2551 which is the channel of initiation and that's your your one and only channel so you have seven undefined centers and you have i think you've got about 19 hanging gates you've got a lot of hanging gates which are which are all the the kind of half channels or the the centers that just have a a, a gate on them so you have a lot of openness in your design and um yeah. Um, how did you first uh, come across human design and when was it? Not so long ago, um, actually. I, I heard of it before, but um, at the time I didn't pick it up. And uh, just last, I think last summer, I was searching um, to go deeper into Tantra. And to do that, I came to Gene Keys first, and then Gene Keys brought me to human design. And and like I told Roluca earlier, this is how it how it if something connects, if it clicks, it clicks, and I go all the way. So I probably will study this for another ten years. Do all <laughs> the all the trainings that uh, that are offered, probably if I have the the means to do that. But. Um, I, I saw it, I read only two or three lines because I don't read books, I don't do that. I, I read a couple of things, I listen to a couple of people, different people, and then if there's a will, I go. And, and I don't wait, I just gather all the resources I had. At the time, I didn't think that I could afford it, but I know I will, and then I subscribe, and then all the means come, the universe provides when I want something. <laughs> And then here I am. Beautiful. Yeah, I guess there's, there's kind of like when we, when we have these conversations, it's cool because there's, there's at least three different levels going on, right? Because we can look at your chart and we can say, okay, you've got this ego um, projected 
uh, authority like what does it mean how does it work what does the the theory and and then of course we can listen to your experiences and and, and you sharing about that but the thing i'm finding more and more is that the most valuable thing is actually just the frequency of you you know that we get to experience you and it's such a gift we can see you we can, i can see you i can hear you and it's it's like you know the the, the the what does this person feel like you know how is it when they talk about something and uh you know, it's, it's super interesting because you're obviously an energy projector, um, but just with that one, that one motor. And uh, what, was it, what was it like when you first found out? So, so in the summer, you, you found the Gene Keys, then you found human design. Did, did, you, did you think like, ah, that makes sense. I'm a projector. Like, what was the first, the first experience of it? Yeah, yeah. First experience was exactly that. Um, um, Okay, now I understand. And, and immediately, so I don't have to change. All the, all the things that I was in my early, like my childhood, all the things that, were, that, that, that people said to me that I was and that needed to be changed. Um, I, I, sometimes I, I, I remember in, in my search um, always trying to figure out, do I need to change that or do I just need to withdraw myself a bit, uh, being less explicit sometimes. <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and when I first read about my chart and especially the authority that I have, I thought it all makes sense. And, and of course I don't have to change i just need to channel that energy i just need to understand how that energy is channeled by nature and um yeah so gives so me did, um peace. Yeah, it sounded like it sounded like there was something quite juicy there did you um did you do you have an example of uh of that happened like what 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 was it that people were trying to get you to change what behave like were they trying to get you to because this is something that you know we you know it's like whether we whether it's as kids someone saying in your, on your school report you know they should they should apply themselves more they have great potential or whether it's as an adult and we're doing self improvement or self development work like the self is something that you know we need to improve it's not good enough um, yeah. do you, do you have any specific examples of of like what were the kind of things people were saying to you like well, my mom is a teacher. My mom was a teacher. She she uh, she passed away a year and a half ago, and I remember when we were little, with a, a very dynamic. Well, I think I think a lot of people would call it a dysfunctional family. <laughs> it was a lot of things happening in my in my family, um, and my mom was trying to modelize my me a bit. I, one of the things was um, uh, my independence, my sense for adventure or doing more extreme stuff than she was comfortable with um and okay. uh, my stubbornness so that i have this right. strong, i always had this strong will and and i also know how to express it and that was something sometimes very hard in a, yes. in a family with four daughters and hard working parents and yeah right Right, right. So, so, so I guess that will of like, once you're doing something, you're doing something. It's yeah. like, I'm going to do this thing. Yes. Um, and you also have two death gates, uh, the 38, the 39 as well in your, in your chart, which um, they're not there to listen. To, and that's in your incarnation cross. So it's, it's strong and it's not there to listen to what other people think you should be doing. It uh, yeah. makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Right. I, okay. You know, I, I now know that there is this subtle difference between just not listening because I was always listening. Yes. But I learn from hearing myself. So other people trigger me to think something or to or to say something. And that's how I learn to, to reflect on my own words. And I write quite a bit like small pieces not books because people ask me sometimes why don't you read a book no 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 not, i don't have the energy for that but small parts like responses or thoughts that i have and i learn a lot about those yeah 
So I guess what's important for you learning is then is the environment rather than the information and, and the energies that are around you to help you to, the, the, so you can do the learning. No one can really then teach you. It's more like you being in the right space where you can learn what you want to and need to learn. Does that make, is that, is that what you're saying? Yes, but, but, but also the energy. The energy, the energy. yes. Yeah. The energy of the people surrounding me is very important. Uh, yeah. In order for me to also be triggered the right way, so to speak. Yes. So, so certain people, they, they don't trigger me to speak. I, I have more of, you know, I withdraw myself because I, I, I have this sense of um, not feeling safe or secure enough to speak my mind and then I withdraw myself. But when I'm triggered by an environment, uh, then yeah, and it's completely different. It's it's about energy. It's 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 really about energy. Yeah. So it sounds like you're, you you experience yourself quite different in different situations depending on yes. how it feels to you to be in that space. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And do you do you relate that to your seven open centers? Because you've obviously got all that openness. Um, yeah. And actually, you know, yesterday we were talking to Tanuja and she's also got, she's got the, the throat and the spleen. So she was also saying, as well as having all that openness, she's also got all of those hanging gates, which, you know, they're, they're, they're like, you know, hands waiting to connect with the other people around her that she could quite enjoy when she was in the right space. But then other times would be quite, you know, she would shut down because it's too much. Um, how how is it having because because i mean i've got i've only got three open centers undefined mm -hmm. centers so how is it having those seven centers do you do you feel a lot of everything around you with those i think it depends on uh, i'm now i'm in a situation where i have a lot of freedom um mm -hmm. i have a lot of freedom to move to relocate to where i feel fine and um, and then an, for me, an open, the open centers are a blessing because I have all these tastes. I have all these, you no, know, I can move around and have all these, this input. Um, but I also work with, with uh, people and sometimes I, I, um, I consciously move myself into an environment where I am like uh, not able to move and then I function differently. <laughs> so I need I need the, all these flavors around me. I need all these different, and it's not so much that when I withdraw myself because I, I feel that the environment um, is not safe for me to speak or they will find me arrogant or whatever. Um, it's not so much that um, uh, I feel bad or insecure. I never feel insecure. I just know I will not contribute to that environment. And that's very, that's very typical about me. <laughs> you can put me in any environment all around the world. I have never feel, felt insecure. I, I'm always like secure, but I feel I cannot contribute to this environment. Just shut up. I say to this myself. is a really powerful distinction, isn't it? Because it's like it shifts things away from, you know, because because of course that when we start out as kids, we're like, do this, do they like me? Don't they like me? You know, do I feel good here? And it's shifting it from do they like me or don't they like me or do I feel good or it's, it's shifting it to a whole nother level. Is, is this correct? And, and, and it's so beautiful what you're sharing. Like, do I have something of value to give here? Uh, not only do I have something to give, but is this the right space? Are these people going to receive me? Do they want, you know, do they want what I have to give? And yeah. um, for me that, you know, what you described, Matt, is so such a perfect example of that waiting for the invitation as a projector. Um, has that, was that something that you always kind of had an instinct for? Or um, how, how did that change once you found out that your strategy as a projector was to wait for invitations? Well, I, I feel extremely blessed that I know now mm. uh, the, the theory, like the, the methods, the, right. the, the, the graphics, the, and I was looking for that when I, when I, when I started, you know, um, mm. building up that interest in Tantra, but I did yoga already for 25 years and, and it's a different language. It's a different language because it's all offered in practices, 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 which I did, which I did for the past 20, 25 years. Um, but now I have 
the now I see cohesion. Now now there is more understanding about how the dots are interconnected between mind, between the energy um, moving from mind to spleen to emotional centers. To how it, that for me was really really yeah nice to to uh, to know to yeah. To have that confirmation and have it mapped out really clearly yeah. and precisely and yeah, and, yeah. but instinctly to answer your question, I I think I always had that instinct. But I have to say, I think it is it was it was like bursted into my system through hard lessons through hard lessons. I I had when I was little. Uh, I was in boarding school with my younger sister, who was considered to be a psychiatric patient later. So, so this was a uh, no quite um, um, a powerful, powerful phase in my life. She was my learning master, very, very, very young age, because she challenged me like no one, no one else can, and uh, she learned me to shut up in a, in a in a very difficult way for me. But she she learned me. Uh, to shut up and since then I think I was in my early 20s when in 20s when I understood about recognition and being invited so yeah quite a long time ago not knowing what the explanation of that was but I noticed that it worked and I am a learning being I learn pretty fast and for me things are clear in a moment and then I integrate it immediately so yeah that's how it, it worked and so when you look back on that time like of, of your sister did your sister tell you to shut up or was it just the lesson in the situation or what, what was it the, was the energy she the was energy. Uh, like, she was um, manic de uh, how do you say that depressed and then and then depressive or yeah. bipolar, kind of like an up and down. Bipolar, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So sometimes she would push me away and then she would pull me towards her and push me away. And it was half recognition and then there was no recognition at all. And <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I guess it goes to show, doesn't it, that there's timing involved as well. You know, it's like it's place, person and timing. It's not just like this person's correct, this person's not correct. It's like, um, and I think that's the case with a lot of the, the, the projected channels, it, it is all about timing. You know, um, I don't know if you know the 2343, but it's a classic one. It's the freak to genius that, and it's like when the timing's right, it's genius. The person's, the people are like, wow, how did you know that? That's so powerful. And if, if I say, if I jump in at the wrong time, people are like, you're weird. Um, and they kind of <laughs> turn, you know, that they turn. But um, I mean, I don't, I wonder sometimes like when, when we have these diagnosis of, you know, because of course medicine assumes we should have a, a constant way of being. And then if, if someone has an up and a down in their rhythm somehow or pulses of energy, um, you know, I think with human design, we look at it really, it's, it's a really different view compared to um, some, because, you know, I, I definitely resonate with having ups and downs of energy. And it's, um, you know, with those individual, the individual circuits having that, like that pulse, which is on and then it's off. Um, I mean, your channel is individual. So do you, do you feel that as a, like a pulse that comes and goes that channel of initiation? Uh, the channel of initiation? No. Well, yeah, well, it, it depends. It, it's not so much that it's a, a, a pulse coming from my energy system. It's triggered by the other. So it depends on, again, on the people that I connect with. Yeah. And, um, and then there is no pulse. I th I'm, I'm thinking about this now, so I, I shouldn't because I don't know exactly. No, I don't know. I, it sounds I do more recognize like it's waiting the in to be invited. Sorry. It sounds more like it's waiting to be invited. It's 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 an energy yes. that's there. That's kind of when it's invited, it's there. Yes. As, a, as an energy. Yes. I, I I do I do thrive on invitations. If if I would be in in, in circumstances where there were where there were no invitations then I could answer that question perhaps better. Um, yeah, because I, I, I'm overwhelmed with invitations at the moment. 
So mm. Mm. <laughs> for me, it's it's now I'm very energetic now and mm. very you know this is yes. con continuously flowing now. It might be a good time to talk about your profile, the two four, because what you're describing sounds very much like the fourth line, having all the opportunities from the people that you know to do different things. Um, how how do you how do you how does that to be the the two four? Um, I don't know if, if that's the two four, but um, uh, I I do I do feel that I have a sense of um, knowing when the opportunity arises. But there is also a very like I said in in the few lines that I wrote for you guys. Uh, there's also yeah. a very very strong faith that there are opportunities everywhere, and that in the end I will be taken care of. Yes. So at the moment I was thinking just a couple of weeks ago, the moment I was thinking about how will I cope financially in January, like a couple of weeks ago, I was, that thought came into my mind. Uh -huh. Then the phone rings and someone calls me up when, and saying, we need your expertise on this matter in January. <laughs> and that happens all the time. And that's why I take risks. I take risks all the time. And people say, say to me, oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. That's not, you know, this is a risk that you can't take at the moment. I did that with my children as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just challenged them a bit or, you know, let them take risks that they wanted themselves. And people said, no, 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 no. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> but I, 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 I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I, no, a notary said to me recently, um, Mrs. Fervaz, you should feel very, you should feel very insecure about your situation. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not. So, yeah. So I don't know if it's, uh -huh. if it's the faith that I have and related to one or more gates, or is it the opportunistic side that I have? That I, and that in combined with the trust that I have in myself and my direction in life and the love that I have for all that lives and they will provide, you know, it will come. I don't know. It's, I think it's not one thing. I, and that's the beauty of this system. It is, it is the entire design. Yeah, the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. So sometimes, often I cannot distinct one from the other. Yeah, but I can see it. how it operates in, mm -hmm. in the whole. Uh -huh. I'm not so much also into the content of what is happening in my life or in the, the lives of the people that I work with. I work a lot also in, in prisons with criminal, you know, with, with, with prison prisoners that are already incarcerated for 20 or more years. Mm. And it's not so much the content of their life that fascinates me. It's how things are interconnected in their system and you know the the content is just there to serve us to give us the learning opportunities it's not it's not there for us to analyze or to you know to discuss or to it's too much words about the content of people's lives it, it's only it's only there to offer an opportunity to learn that's how i feel well, something that's very clear in your in how what you're sharing is this feeling of being you and you know feeling just it's it's perfect to be exactly how you are yeah and that's a really nice yeah. thing to, that's a nice thing to experience yeah you know it's like and this is it, it kind of goes back to that thing of like you know feeling feeling that trust that trust of how, how it's going to work out like trusting in life yeah. uh also the trust of like well i may have something to say i may not have something to say but i'm in the right place because here i am you know exactly exactly yeah i had that all throughout my life right like, this is even though it was very painful some circumstances mm. very painful not nice I was, I always had a strong sense of being in the right place at the right time with mm. all I needed to know at that specific time. So it was okay, even though it was painful. This is okay, even though it is not nice. It is okay. 
because that means you can get on with learning what you need to learn or enjoying it or being there. Whereas if there's a part of you like, oh, I shouldn't have made that decision. I shouldn't be here. This is wrong. It shouldn't be happening like this. It's like you're not actually there dealing with what's going on. So that's really powerful. Yes, that is really powerful. And, yeah. and the majority of the people that I work with, um, that's, that's, what, that's where they are blocked. You know, that's where they are blocked. They are so, so they, they have difficulty de-attaching from the content of what is happening and, and, you know, just accepting that it is okay to be exactly where they are. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Cause you can't change what's, what, what's happened. It's, it's like, often, here you are. often we can't. Yeah. 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 Raluca's uh, mentioned, she just uh, put in the chat that there's a little noise coming through. I don't know if there's anything we can do to, um, to help that. I can't hear it too much, but. Um, I think it was the clock, the clock just um, in my father's house, maybe. No, it's something like when you talk, it's, I don't know. It's, it wasn't, it's sometimes it's not there, sometimes it isn't. But my 22 gate can feel it, can hear it. So I, would, <laughs> I, I love hearing you talk and I want to have this perfect experience. I don't know if there's, if you have headphones or if we can do something about it. We want you to be as, we want to hear you as clearly as possible. Yeah, because it's beautiful to hear your stories and I would hate it to be. If we can do something about, I don't know, do you have any headphones or? I don't have any headphones around, no. You don't no, have? No, sorry. Well, okay. let's give it, let's give, let's go like this. If there's if there's no mm. other options, um, I think it's okay for me, Raluca. But I think you've got a good ear. Raluca's like our sound engineer, so you know she's got <laughs> a good ear for it. <laughs> yeah, I can hear stuff that other people don't. So <laughs> I wanted to make <laughs> okay. If you don't have phones, we'll go like this. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Cool. Go on. That's okay. <laughs> so um, so I I I do want to ask you more. Uh, about this this thing this about this uh this this authority you know because it is one that we you know, it's, it's rare to actually meet someone who has this ego projected authority so you know we, we spoke with natalie i don't know if you saw here at home interview but she is talking about you know do do i have the will for this do i have the is that because the, the, the what i understand of the will is it's a motor that like comes on and goes off it's not like there all the time and it's like it's very specific. It's very specific. It'll come on when there's a yes from that from that sort of that center, I guess. How how do you feel it? Do, like, because you seem pretty clear in your decision making. Yes, I am, and and it it is like something that you, like you describe, but it continues also. So the the energy stays. Like I said, I knew. Like I talked to my sister when when we were talking about human design in the summer last year, she came also around human design. I think for the second time already because she's she's a manifesting generator. She off and on, and on. so she works completely different. And uh, for me, it was the first encounter with human design. We we discussed it. Um, uh, what uh, what interests you? What interests me? And within two days. I subscribe to LYD, is that the name, eh? LYD, um, and, and she had, you know, she had no clarity yet, so she waited a bit more, and then finally she did also, and, um, and I know from the moment I subscribed, I knew I'm not going to do only LYD, it will probably take me like 10 years to go through all the trainings that these people have. You know, if I have the means, which will come, because I know it will come. If I want it, it will come. <laughs> I will do a, the analyst training, and I will do, I'm specifically very interested in the, the training. Um, you know, I don't know the name anymore, but it's it like psychoanalysis, uh, you know? Um, I don't know the name anymore, but it's a specific part of the analyst training. I'm sure I will do it all. Um, that's who I am. So the, the will is there. And I can thrive on that will. I finish always. I finish everything that I begin with. I finished. I started one yoga training years and years ago. It it only um, fueled my will to know more. I went to India five years. I did all the schooling that is available internationally on yoga. Then I started with Ayurveda. Uh, started from a will moment. But then I finished the whole um, training of five years. Um, exactly. <laughs> so the energy continues. 
And have you ever start? Have you ever looking back started something and then realized it wasn't correct and that you 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 made because you know part of the the learning can often be learning when you you didn't you weren't in alignment. Does, do you ever have that experience of starting something and then being like, actually my my will wasn't in this and and it doesn't it doesn't continue. No, no, never. But I do made wrong choices, of course. I, uh -huh. But that's in the in relationship to people always. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like being called upon something, and then the initiation is not correct, and then, and then seeing how damaging that is to the other person mostly because. I, I never had the experience where I felt like I was damaged in that uh, interaction, but I was clear on offering not the correct uh, guidance to the other person. For the and other person. Then I was, yeah, there was sometimes it was a, was a harsh lesson, eh? like people push mm. you away or, or you just jump out of the relationship yourself because it doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But not, not the, the example that you give so no. that's interesting. So we've got the, with this channel of initiation, I, I, I guess it's, I, it's really making sense what you were saying before about like, you know, everything is an initiation. Everything in life is an initiation of some sort. And I guess, you know, we've got this channel, it's got the gate 25, which is innocence, the gate of the spirit of the self. And then we've got this gate 51 on the will, which is the arousing, the gate of shock. And so, you know, it's like, whenever you're around people it's it's not surprising if they're going to have these experiences that can be shocking and you know that shock could be a beautiful initiation if they're able to you know take that lesson but it could also be too much if it's not if it's not correct so it sort of sounds like you're you're okay anyway because you're you're cool with the the initiation you, you'll take whatever you need to learn from it yeah. But then at the same time, it's like it may not be correct for the other person. Um, yeah, that's exactly true. I, I have a lot of uh, examples of both where the initiation was correct and where it was not correct. And from some of those not correct initiations, I now regret. I, I really regret that now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So and and in that in that sense, um, of course, you, you can say that I, I was hurt or I felt, you know, I felt the hurt. Huh? Mm. But always there is this strong sense of being at the right place at the right time with all the things that are correct for me. So it is never destabilizing or, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I never go that deep like my yeah. sister, for instance, does. Uh -huh. She can go right really deep and doubting her entire existence. I never felt that. I never was in that spot. Never. It's so so interesting, as you know, because it, it it shifts the it shifts the whole conversation. Because I, I know a lot of projectors when they first come into the experiment, or you know, they 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 they're, they're learning it, and and it's like, well, you know, I want more, I want more invitations. I want someone to invite me to come in and be a guide. And it's like, it's like that sort of bitterness at not being invited. Whereas you're talking about having the responsibility, it's almost like you what you carry is quite a, a sharp sword. So it's like if you come in and it's correct for the other person, correct invitation, then it can be very powerful. And that person could have a, you know, it's like you're a very skilled surgeon, maybe not through what you're doing, but just through your presence, through your energy, there can be that initiation. Whereas, um, it's like, okay, would you, do you really want me to come in with my sword? Because, you know, you might not like it, you know? <laughs> so I that, tell that to people. <laughs> right, right. This may be, you know, if I come in here, this is, might get a bit uncomfortable. You know, you, yeah. you, you have to be 100% yes if we're going yes. to yes. go yes, ahead. Yes, I ask, I ask them questions. Are you sure? Are I'm you sure? sure? Yeah. And it, it doesn't mean, I just thought yesterday I had a consultation with someone and I, and I told her, I asked her the same questions, and I also told her, it doesn't mean that you have to fulfill, that, that you have to prove yourself to me. Not at all. Initiation has nothing to do with you proving yourself to me. Uh, my shock will, will 
bring movement, but not according to my suggestion, the content of my suggestions. No, no, no. Follow your own path, no? Follow your own path. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? As a defined will center as well, like we've got 70% of people who do not have defined will, you know, like, like yesterday we were, we were speaking with Tanuja and she was saying that when she learned to listen to her instinct, her spleen would tell her, okay, don't walk on that side of the road, go over there. And she would, she, you know, once she got, once she allowed herself to listen, it was much better. Whereas before her open will, will center was like saying, well, you've, you've started to walk down the side of the street, so you should keep going. You know, this is the shortest way you should follow through on that kind of like, you know, promise to yourself. And then she was finding that there were groups of men yelling out at her and it wasn't much fun. Um, whereas if she just listened to, you know, if she, if she wasn't in that, she, she was just, you know, going along with the flow, um, that her spleen was just guiding her perfectly where, where was, where was healthy and correct. Um, so I guess, I guess that, uh, do, do you, can you, can you notice that a lot when people who do not have the defined, uh, ego center are making promises that, because you, you sound like when you start something, you'll finish it. That just seems very clear. You've got three out of four gates activated. Do you notice that people around you sometimes make promises that aren't true for them? Can you feel it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, now now that I know the design of my sister, it right. made, it's made much, much more sense. Now I don't feel like she's not keeping her promise anymore. I don't. I just know that there's no clarity and i say sometimes i look at her and i say you don't have clarity you don't seem to be clear about this so just don't tell me anything just don't you know let's let's talk about this later just be unclear um, we can come back to it yeah so and 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 that way yeah it's, it's not always nice because you can't you know you you you, you can't um agree on something very easily because I'm like, okay, let's go to Madrid, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, and then that was three months before we departed. We were, we were planning on going with all the sisters. And then the day before the plane lift off, she still had no clarity. So she stayed <laughs> at home and I ended up in Madrid with, with only one sister out of, out of three. So, but that's that's okay i know now that's okay it's perfectly fine i that's notice so with my yeah with yeah, my clients right. i notice a lot of pleasing with the the open um the open heart centers a lot of pleasing that's sometimes for me that's sometimes you know that's sometimes difficult for me to, to resonate with uh, when it continues and continues. And even though they know the mechanism, even though they know how this thing works and they recognize it, they are still stuck into the pattern of continue that pleasing behavior. Mm. Mm. That's sometimes difficult for me. So is that, is that the thing about um, wanting to uh, please other people in order to feel better about the self through the open will or is it because because sometimes it's like when I notice it's like the in myself the open emotional center that's like avoiding conflict and truth but but you were speaking about like the will is it ha, ha, is that is that what you mean like um, it's both it's both I, I, I connected sometimes to in the open emotional center as well but also sometimes it's it's about the core of their existence they they need the positive feedback of their children or their family in order to um, to feel good about being alive. You know, you know, to be taking valid. space, taking to space. Like, very, I'm very here, basic. I, here I am. Yes. Yes. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I could I could see how you model that very strongly. Like I could see how if you're working with people that that they could really because it's it's kind of like it just is when it's there it just is it's not something you have to prove there's nothing to prove because you're here you are yeah nothing you know like what, i say what? your your inc incarnation itself is the proof that you are here it, it's yes. the proof that you are worth being here is your incarnation yes. yes yes one of my teachers baron katie says there's no mistake in a kind universe it's not you're not an accident you're here yes you're exactly here. Yeah. exactly yeah. very powerful <laughs> and i also say to people you know and there's no 
There is no wrong and right. Nature does not have the distinction between wrong and right. You can't make wrong decisions. You can only make, you can only get into the next step will lead you to another step. So you can all, only take decisions that will offer you direction, that will offer you the next possible steps available. There is no wrong and right. And the content is not what you are here for. When you are 100 years old, hopefully, you know, and you look back, you will, you will connect. I saw that with my mom because we were with, with the charts, we and my sisters, we were very close and we, we helped my mom, so to speak, dying or, you know, mm. we were very close by her. And, uh, mm. and um, she looked back on her life, not overviewing the content of her life, uh -huh. No, it was pure energy, pure energy, you know, pure, what, what did I attract? What, what did I pull away, push away? What, you know, it, it, yeah, it, it wasn't, not words, were not many words spoken about her life at the end. No, it, that for me was very, very fascinating. And also this, it, it connects strongly with my faith, my, my belief, that is, yeah. So there's no wrong and right. You can make mistakes. You can't, you can't. It's only potentials coming into manifestation. And as soon as you start manifesting one potential, all the other available potentials are not there anymore. So it will give you a new spectrum with new potentials. Karma, right? Karma. That's the wheel of karma. That, that makes it really fascinating for me. It really resonated with me when you said about each decision gets you to the next place. It's like, yeah. it get, you know, and then there's the next one. Yeah. And then you're there. And then yeah. you get to make decisions on based on those options. So it's, it's yes. uh, and, yeah. It's very and like clear. we said, we, we are, we have just a small influence on what's available all the potentials are offered that those are not ours to create we only make the decisions we only take the next step and all the potentials are offered and that's synchronicity it's synchronicity so you, how everything is interconnected we don't have the overview of the entire creation fortunately we don't have that yeah it'd be pretty no? intense huh? <laughs> we just got our piece that's enough <laughs> huh? we've just got the piece that we need we've got our piece of the puzzle yeah the the interdependence nature of it all it's it's yes. it's, it's just you know I, I i don't have because this is this is this for me is presence what you're describing is presence i mean you know beyond any any human design it's like it, the, what are the things that could take you away from being here now doing what, what you know, being in what, wherever you are doing? Well, it could be um, worrying about other people and what, you know, trying to play on their side of the tennis net, you know, being in their business um, where your job is to play your side of the net. And that, yeah. or you could go back into the past and be like, oh, I shouldn't be here. This is a mistake. Well, well no, you're here, uh, apparently. Or going into the future and thinking, oh, well, I, this is where I think I want to be in the future. And all of those, you, you're not actually, no one's home. No one's home to do you if, if, you know, if you're, exactly. if you're yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> in a different And that's, that's so, the, what, what the mind does, uh, Dunstan. That's what the mind does. Yeah. And that was my training for the past 20 years. To yeah. My fascination to go beyond the mind. And I, I know already for 20 years that... The mind is a very valuable and very necessary feature. We can't live without it. You can't even get enlightened without it. That's the misperception about meditation. Like you want to shut your mind off. No, of course not. You need your mind to get enlightened. You, you, do, you have to use that feature. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. If, yeah. you know, it, right. it well, has we've got a those purpose. two centers on the body graph. The top two centers, you know, they exist. There they are, right? Yeah. yeah. So you need them both. Yeah. But don't don't you know you have to detach from the content of the mind that's yes. what pulls you into maya that's uh -huh. what pulls you into maya uh -huh. so that's for me was yeah and the interesting thing about human design with all the knowledge i had 
in yoga, all the practices I did for many years, the interesting thing of human design was to know how energy flows through the chart uh, and, and connects the, 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 the energetic connection from mind to emotion, to sacral, to spleen, to root, to, to throat, to ajna, to mind. That for me, that is the contribution of, of human design for me because I, I was looking for that cohesion. Mm. How does energy connect all these parts? For me, okay. that was the fascinating mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because so, so you said that you, you've been doing, you, you said it was a journey through Tantra that led you to um this this human design via the gene keys how because because obviously tantra is all about the movement of energy and the different centers and the polarity between masculine and feminine um how do you how does that tie in with like how do you feel that alongside with the human design you've obviously got those seven centers that are um you know, for me, I think of the, the, the white centers as very yin, very receptive, like they take in the energy from other places and they amplify it. Um, and the, the colored in ones to me feel more yang, more like they, they, they're full. Um, but I, how, how is it having, you know, is there anything you could share about the Tantra journey and the human design journey and how those two things have, have come together for you? For me, it, basically, for me, it feels like the same thing. I, it, it, the only thing that, that differs between the two is the language in which it is manifested. That's mm -hmm. the only thing that differs to me. The human design is very graphic. And, and you know, like I said, it has a very clear uh, language about the interconnection. Mm -hmm. And the Tantra, I, well, the Srividya Tantra that I, that I studied a little just because it is big, big 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 huh? so i just scratched the surface of that previdya tantra is about practice practice this practice that you know it's about devotion it's about and it has this 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 philosophy you know that the philosophical side of, of of tantra and it has the very concrete practice but in between i lacked i lacked like a linking pin but it's, it's obviously there, I just didn't find it. And human design, for me, filled that gap. It filled that gap. But all, all is the same. I went to South America um, last summer with my oldest daughter. And uh, we learned a little bit about Panchamama and, uh, you know, the, the, the philosophy over there. Uh, went to Machu Picchu, we learned a little bit about uh, the history there. And it's all yoga all energy and it's all human design. That's what I find fascinating about the creation, that all the information since humankind came into existence, all the information popped up at exactly the same time, all places in the world. So it's like this complete mind manifests in like all, all, all kinds of beings and it like it the the cha the cha the channel opens in South America in Europe and in, in Asia and at the, and the same information comes through and people write it down or lecture about it in other words but it's exactly the same wherever I go in India in Nepal in South America in in Europe even our Celtic tradition it says exactly the same thing that is fascinating to me. It's nice you can see the connections and that it it it, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, to me too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, how uh, how familiar are you with your incarnation cross, the cross of tension? No, I, I didn't study it yet. I um, so I no, I would say I'm not familiar with that. No. So it's got the uh, the interesting thing is you've got both the gates thirty eight and thirty nine, which you know are the two death gates. Um, those ones are actually opposite each other. So they, they come together in your incarnation cross. Um, and 38 is actually your sun gate. So that's like to do with like your, your incarnation of why you're here. You know, this 38, um, the gate of the fighter. Um, and I've got a, I've got a little few words here from Ra where he's talking specifically about the two, four. Um, would you like me to read that out? Yeah, please do. Yeah. 
So he's got uh, the two four. Um, and of course, there's different versions of the right angle cross of tension and your number four, right angle cross of tension number four. So he says politeness, opposition that does not transgress normal codes of behavior, the value of discretion or the energy for over politeness. What's that old expression? Discretion is the better part of value. Basically, the 38-2, when they're at their most polite, is informing you of how useless you are to them. <laughs> Understand that. <laughs> so when they're at their most polite, is informing you how useless you are to them. <laughs> the velvet boxing glove, by the sound of it. Um, the velvet hammer. So he, Ra says, Understand that. This is not niceness. This is not humanistic. It's not any of those things. The 38s attract violence. And I don't just mean physical violence, but verbal violence. They do. It's clear when you feel their aura that you know they are fighters. It doesn't have this name for nothing. So you must be very suspicious about a 2-4 on this cross or any 2-4. Think about the second line theme and recognize that built into the second line theme is politeness. Now, politeness is a strategy. It's a strategy for protecting your integrity. It's a strategy for being able to preserve your energy for the right action. So when you have somebody who has this line and they're being polite, what's really going on inside them is, I'd like to take this son of the bitch by the throat and hang them. <laughs> but what they're really saying is, could you please pay your bill? <laughs> they don't want to waste their energy on what happens if they let go of what they really have inside. It's not worth the fight. It's not. As a matter of fact, the interesting thing about the 38-2 is that it will completely lose this the moment that right action is there. In other words, if right action truly demands they shed their politeness, they actually will. But they have to be in the right action. The deepest concern of the root gate pointed at the spleen is not misusing the energy not wasting the energy. That's why you see people that have all three channels defined. And it's surprising how many times you get to see that, is that these beings need to exercise because they repress so much energy waiting for the right action that they end up with enormous problems, usually water retention. This isn't you, because this is, this is people who've got those uh, root up to the, up to the spleen. Um, what else does he say here? Um, yeah, he's just, he talks a lot about the, the 2838 as a channel, but I think that's, a, that, 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 that's interesting because it's, especially with you being um, ego projected, because it's talking about basically, is it worth having a fight here? Um, and that uh, you will if you have to, but uh, in the meantime, you're like, nah, that fight's not really probably worth, go, not worth the effort. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was my most important lesson in life to know what to fight for. Mm. Mm -hmm. I remember I, I was, you know, um, um, involved into all kind of social activities, social work. I was volunteering for refugees and I was like, when I, in my younger years, I was like on the, you know, on the stage. <laughs> um, but uh, that changed, that changed. I, I'm now way more careful with my energy, where, where to give my energy. Um, and where to not do that yeah. I mean you have the 18 the gate 18 which is on the spleen which is that uh, it's part of it it would make up the channel of judgment and it's that's in the collective that that's the fighting for the betterment of you know people you know the collective that that, that you know standing up for people's rights that kind of uh, yeah. that kind of energy and you have that uh, you've actually got that gate activated three times so it, interestingly it's in your south node which is like you know, your life purpose, but where you've come from, you've also got it activated in, in um, Jupiter and Uranus as well. So it's a triple activation on that gate 18. That's uh, the gate of correction in, in the collective there. Um, <laughs> has it four times? <laughs> yeah, Reluca has got that one. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to change the world. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the key with that is to, uh, to, 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 for it, to, I mean, I, I don't think I need to say this to you, but you know, that gate 18 is for the collective, not the individual and not the tribe. It's not for not to judge yourself. It's not to judge the people around you. And, but you seem to live in a state of, at least what you're sharing, you seem to live in a state of high acceptance 
yeah. of, 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 of people being how they are. Um, this gate 39 is interesting as well. I mean, I have the 38 and 39 as well. Um, so the th there you are. The 39 yeah, is... Uh... <laughs> three times, three times. It's three o'clock. <laughs> Gone. Yeah, so you've got, um, you've got gate 39, which is the gate of provocation. And in the second line, it's confrontation. So um, the keynote here is the value of obstructing in provoking analysis, assessment, and reevaluation. Um, but it, and especially having that gate of provocation along with the, the, the channel of initiation and the, you know, the gate of shock up there, the 51, it's very much about, is this the right, um, you know, it's, it's like, it's a death gate. So it's not up to you to modify your behavior, but it's like noticing, you know, for the right person, this could bring great value. Well, I can give you an example of that if you want. I'd love to hear an example. Um, I, I teach in uh, yoga in prison already for eight years, eight, eight, seven, eight, nine years. Yeah. And um, for me, this, this is, this is oh, I like to do this. This is the environment where I can do most of, you know, that there I really can make a contribution. And um, a couple of years ago, three, three four years ago, um, there was someone in my uh, class coming regularly, uh, coming out of isolation. He was in isolation for 16 years. This is even oh, beyond wow. any, any human rights that we know of yeah. in Belgium, in Belgium, yeah. in, in the basement. There are people. Solitary uh, confinement. For, yeah. yeah. So, so this, this person was completely isolated for, for years and years and years and years in a row from society. He came into my class and and I stand always, I stand at the door receiving people. I look into their eyes, even though they are never looking into mine, you know, they, they just the big guys, you know, big guys. And, uh, and he comes in and I look into his eyes and I see something and spontaneously I say, you look to me as if you haven't had a hug in years. And, and he had tears in his eyes and he said, I didn't. And I said, do you want, are you okay with me giving you a hug? And he says, please do. And I hugged him for five minutes or more. Well, that was an extremely, uh, not very, very fascinating experience. And then he came to my classes regularly. And at a certain point he said, I'm being transferred to another now psychiatric um, uh, center and, and a psychiatric, you know, criminal center. He says, uh, are you willing to uh, meet me individually and be my coach? That was a formal recognition. Yeah. One of the, one of the formal recognition I had that this was, was also very clear. And, and I said to him, without thinking, there was will. So I don't have to think then. Yes, I will. This was almost three years ago. I visit this man every week or sometimes more, more times a week. Uh, I do this voluntarily. This is entirely my doing. And the amount of energy that I put, that I invest, that's how I see it, that I invest in this person uh, to give him the opportunity of a free life because he had no perspective whatsoever a few years ago. And this perspective is slowly, gradually coming because through me, he has a network. I'm building him a network. And I am um, in all kinds of meetings with the prison board and with his therapeutic team and uh, in order to, you know, and I work with him very intimate, intimately, very closely uh, uh, to, to improve his, you know, his chances of getting out um, ever, ever again, because he has no date of coming out. Huh? I have Powerful. enormous amount of energy when it, when this happens. Yeah. Yeah. And it I, continues. It continues. Yeah. So when, when yeah. there's a will, like I said, yeah. I will finish it till the end. Yes. Yeah. That's a really powerful example. So there was that recognition there, you know, you saw him, he recognized that what you were giving was something very powerful. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I kind of, I couldn't imagine that, you know, being in solitary confinement for such a long time and then, um, coming out and, <laughs> and having a, a beautiful woman there, uh, say, would you like a hug? You know, that's kind <laughs> of like, wow, that's a contrast. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. 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 What a powerful example.
Yeah. Is there anything else um, from your chart that you wanted to talk about or just from your experience with human design or anything at all um, from, from um, your journey uh, with, with human design? Mm, not specifically, no. It's, uh, it's really cool to have you, you know, just the, the, for, for anyone watching this, I, I'm, I love hearing the, the, the way it's, it's the way that you, it's the way you communicate. It's the energy that comes through in your voice, in your, you know, and it's, it's like you were saying, it's the, it's the, it's the context rather than the content. It's, it's the, it's the how it's, and this is such a, you know, th this is why it's so juicy to speak with people like this, because we get to hear, you know, we get to feel you, we get to experience you over and above anything that, you know, any words that, that uh, we could, we could share between us, you know, so when we could do a transcript, but, but, you know, that would be like, you know, a little, little bit of what's here. So, so <laughs> thank you so much for, for taking the time. And I hope your, I hope your dad recovers from his, uh, his skydiving adventures. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> and, he will, uh, he will. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I look forward to, you know, staying in touch. I wish you a really great journey with your human design and, and however many decades you, you go where your will takes you like into, into the, the, the adventure. And um, yeah, I'm really glad we got to, we got to connect and uh, Raluca saying thanks as well. Yeah. Thank you, Raluca. Thank you, Dunstan. It was nice to meet you. Beautiful. <laughs> nice, nice to chat. Yeah. Well, we, we, we'll, we'll see you again sometime soon, hopefully. Okay, <laughs> We've got some okay. other ideas for getting people together in different ways to talk about different things. It's been really cool. Thanks so much for sharing so honestly and openly about all your adventures. You're welcome. Thank you, too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.